The order we received yesterday, did you send it? Not yet. Please, can you make sure that it does go out today? Yes, Dad. All right then, Mum. I'm off. One moment round here. Let's have a look at you. There. Have you got all your books? Yes, Mum. And your dinner money? Oh, Mum. Stop fussing over him. He's a big boy now. He's so smart in his school uniform. It ought to be that price. A school uniform is a sensible thing. It shows a sense of discipline. Oh, yeah. Look, we moved into a new district. Randhir is starting a new school. Don't run it down, Dalit. Help him to make something of it. Randhir, all the opportunities are there, I'm telling you. Yeah, well, that reminds me, Dad. I've been asked to pay in the football trials on Saturday. So do you mind if I give the shop a miss just this once? Oh, no, Randhir, not on a Saturday. You know that. Yeah, but, Mum, this is really important. I might get in the team. And we can manage without him, surely. Saturday is our busiest time. We rely on you both. Oh, please, Dad. Look, I'll think about it. No point thinking about it. I said I'm going and that's all there is to it. Andy. Oh dear, that's not like him. This new school, I hope he's all right there. Of course he's all right. Grange Hill is a first-rate place and Rundir is going to get a lot out of it. Look at them. Look at them. Look, blue, green, green, green. Well, they asked us to choose, didn't they? They wanted to have us auctioning for our parents in that. They should just say what we want them to do. They didn't intend to take any notice. Well, I got the subjects I wanted. Yeah, but Suzanne didn't. She's going to do history. And she don't want to do history. I rather like history myself. Yeah, well, I freaking don't. I want to do me What is that mean? Oh, shut up a minute, Anita. Look, all right. I mean, it isn't our fault, is it? Well, what am I supposed to do? Do a subject I don't even like? I mean, they can't force me, can they? It's not a dictatorship. Uh, excuse me. What? Well, actually, I've been given the wrong subjects, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah, my last girl's doing biology, and now they put me down flipping geography. What? Well, I'm going to complain. <laughs> I'm going to write an article for the school magazine exposing a whole rotten system. I mean, if they don't let you do the subjects you, what you're interested in, how can you call it a proper education? Oh, you can't. Go what are you going to do, then, about your subjects? Leave her, I suppose. It's awful being you, innit? Don't worry, you soon get the hang of things. Flip me, Nick. What's up, Gripper? Flip me, Mara, is she? He's beginning to get on my nerves, he is, in all sorts of ways. Settle down now, H4, for the register, please. Look at him, sitting there as if he owns the place. He's supposed to be new, isn't he? Stepson, I said quiet, please. Natalie Bismarck. Sir. Davies. Who are you? I've been noticing that bracelet thing on your wrist. What is it? My get up. Have a look. Nice, isn't it? Yeah, really pretty. Is it real silver? Oh, yeah. Want to sell it? No, I can't. Hold on. A friend of my dad, right, he's in the jewellery business. And I could probably get you a very good price if I showed him. How go Patson? Do you ever think about his money? Anyway, I'm not selling it, being a seek and that. Is that where you are, then? A seek? A what? A seek? Wash your ears out. You're so thick today, Anita. I'm not. It's you. You're in a rotten, horrible mood. Anyway, is that why you wear that turban thing? No, that's because he's just washed his hair. Anyway, what do you do at night? Do you sleep in it or what? Pogo, you're so incredibly childish. Come on, can't be late for our wonderful new English teacher. What, old smarty pants? He's awful, isn't he? Well, that's typical McCluskey to appoint someone like him. You coming? OK. Mind you, sir. Everything all right? Beginning to find your feet? Sir. Uh, I think perhaps you ought to make a bit more of an effort to get to know the other kids. You know, often when you're new, you've got to make the first move. You know what I mean? I've known this lot since the first year, and they're OK, believe me. OK, I forget it. Big hurry. Thanks, that's my timetable. Oh, dear, Denny. That's a careless boy. Sorry, fingers slipped. What's the matter, anyway? Got lost. Even if I was, I wouldn't ask you for help. That's a pity. I mean, I can be very helpful at times, can't I? Yeah, you can. Very helpful. 
Yeah, you certainly seem to be the helpful type. I mean, with that headgear on, you might need some help, mightn't you? Might I? Yeah. I mean, somebody might get this burning desire to knock it off. Might they? Do you know what I think? I think you're pathetic, both of you. What on earth are you boys doing? You should have been in your first lesson five minutes ago. Sorry, sir. Where are you going? I'm not in their English group, am I? Grimm's fairy tales. Okay, Stepson. Still in remedial English, are you? I've forgotten. Stepson. Just because the new boy wears a turban, try not to get too excited, okay? And then the lover, sighing like furnace, and with a woeful ballad made to his mistress eyebrow. Then a soldier, full of strange oaths, bearded like the pard, jealous in honor, sudden and quick in quarrel, seeking the bubble reputation. You're late, boy. Sorry, sir, I got lost. The whining schoolboy, with his satchel, and shining morning face, creeping like snail unwillingly to school. Where do those apposite lines come from, boy, eh? He's a new boy, sir. Oh, well, that explains it, then. Naturally, without the benefit of a Grange Hill education, he wouldn't know, would he? Who can tell me? We've just read them H4 in this very speech. Shakespeare. William Shakespeare. Listen, boys and girls, and those of you who are somewhere in between. I'm very keen on Shakespeare, right? We'd better read this speech again. Sit. Page 87, Jaquiz. And read it nicely, boy. It's meant to be poetry. Me? Me read? Is he always like this? All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have, they have their exits and their entrances, and one man in time plays many parts. His ex being seven ages. Hello, Curly. On your own, Mia. Choose plain chips and beans, please. Jenny and Mia keep the company. There we are. I love Thanks. Look, if you're on your own. Mind out the way, for goodness sake. If you're on your own, come and sit with us, right? Do you want a more deal dinner or not, young man? Nothing, Cheese salad, please. Oi, fudge over. I was here first. Chips, right? Three lots of chips and make it snappy. Thank you. Just the chips. What did Blue say to you up here? Dunno didn't listen, did I? Sit here, play see if you want to risk it. Oh, thanks. This place is really getting on my nerves today. Move us in. You'll never guess what she's done now. I'm so mad. Look, sorry, bring the chair over. I asked him to sit there, you know, Suzanne. Well, go on, ask me what's happened. What's that, Suzanne? She's only got an after school magazine, that's all. What? You know I can't do media studies. Mm. Not that again. Listen, you know I was going to write an article about it for a school magazine. Mm. Well, I went to deliver it to Mr Rainsford. And he said, sorry, Suzanne, have you heard? Heard what I said? Heard that the school magazine's been given a chop. That's right, McCluskey's done away with the school magazine. She can't do that. The venue's got it going. I'm flipping as. She does be able to express our views. I told you this was a dictatorship. What? No magazine at all? We're going to make it into some sort of primary news sheet thing, you know, what's on in Grand Jewel sort of thing. Well, I tell you what's on. Flipping revolution if I have anything to do with it. Well, my last school, we lost a magazine. Because of cuts. Probably the same here. I bet it's nothing to do with the cuts. It's Mrs McCluskey. You're such a bad mood today. And you're such a pudding. At least I care about things. What's more, I'm going to go straight to McCluskey about him after lunch. Don't worry, she always gets emotional. He's right in there, isn't he? Who? Mr Singh. Snuggling up the clear. Shouldn't be surprised if he didn't fancy her. He's a big head, isn't he, Georgie? Well, he would be, wouldn't he? With that great big bandage thing on. Can't see a bad if he's been here for years and years. He's only been at school a few days. And he's a foreigner. Well, I think he needs to be taught a bit of respect. Yeah, someone needs to point out who's who around here. Yeah, well, after we've had me dinner, all in good time. Yeah? What will we do, Gooper? We'll see about him. We'll see about a little bit of the old short, sharp shock treatment. Yeah? Hmm. Well, how are we going to do that then, Gripper? I think I'll unwrap his bandages for him, don't you? I mean, it's not a school uniform, is it? He'll only get into trouble if he keeps it on, won't he? Yes? Mr. McCluskey? 
Ross, you can have a word with you, please. Suzanne Ross, isn't it? Yes, miss. Have you got an appointment? No, but it's very urgent. It's about my options. I'm sorry, I can't possibly see anyone without an appointment. And any problems about options should go to your year head. Surely you know that. Yes, I know, miss, but it's about the school magazine as well. I really do need to see you. Suzanne, I can't just have pupils bursting into my office, now can I? Things must go through the proper channels. You know the system as well as I do. Personal problems to your year head, general matters about the school through the school council, all right? Yes, miss. Off you go, then. And Suzanne? Yes, miss. Why aren't you dressed in the correct school uniform? Wait well, if my uniform grants come through from Social Security, miss. I see. Well, even so, there's no excuse to wear jewellery. And may I also point out that that skirt is entirely unsuitable. It's far too short, and I thought I'd made it abundantly clear that no girl was to wear a skirt with slits under any circumstances. Yes, miss. So while you're waiting for your grant to come through, you can at least make an effort to conform with the clothes you have got. Has your skirt got a hem? Don't know, miss. Well, have a look. Well, there you are. You can let that down to a much more sensible length. Do it tonight. And at the same time, ask your mother to sew up those slits, will you? Oh, and Suzanne. Yes, miss? I'll get my secretary to phone Social Security and ask them to hurry up the clothing grant. Thank you, Mrs McCluskey. I told you she wouldn't see you without an appointment, didn't I? Well, I'm not signing up my slits. How would I walk in it, then? Ah, if it isn't our very own Sir Lawrence Olivier. Oh, why are you not outside partaking of the fresh air? Just came in to go to the toilet, sir. Well, hurry up. Now, you two, out. Or are you waiting to go to the toilet as well, eh? No, sir. Do you see what I mean? No freedom in this place. There's plenty of freedom out there, so get on with it. Still front and gripper. Oh. Just want to take off your bandages and see what's underneath. That's all. More important than what I wear. Yeah, but you know what, Bridget's got ah. anything to get rid of you. What's that? Dunno. Come on, let's come and have a look. No. Oh. Gripper and Daniel might have known. Go on, man, dear. Push off while you can. It's a little curly. Why do you have to keep on having a go at him for? Just because he's a bit different, I suppose. What's the matter with you? Temper, temper. You're an ignorant pig, that's what you are. And why can't you leave go of my hand? Not till you give me a kiss. What? Yes, I said. Go, I Let said. go. Take her out. You get off of me. Leave me alone. Come on, Curly. Just one little kiss, Brunkle Gripper. That's all. so disgusting. Ow! Leave her alone, Stimson. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Who, me? Yes, you. No, sir, I was just looking at notes, Paul. About joining the chess club. Uh, it must have been some other boys. I must have got it wrong, sir. Don't wish to detain you boys any further. I'm sure you're very busy. Now then, lad, what did you say your name was? Patterson, sir. All over my shirt. I'm going to kill Gripper. I told you not to move your mouth. 
It's got to stop before afternoon school. We're in dead trouble. Well, it weren't his fault, was it? Yeah, but McCluskey's down like a ton of bricks on fighting this term. She don't care whose fault it is. Well, look on the bright side of things, Dwayne. It's going to stop bleeding in a minute. Hey, you shouldn't be in here. Look, Stu Pot's cut his lip really badly and I'm looking after him. Gordon Bennett, look at his shirt. What's got into everybody this lunchtime? Anyway, what were you doing in the book cupboard with Gripper then? He fancies her, don't he? But weren't that at all, Dwayne? You got that new boy in the cupboard. What do you mean? What's his name? Randy, yeah. Me and Suzanne went to help out. But what's Gripper up to then? He's not the old extortion racket bit again. I thought we taught him a lesson about that the other week. It's not that. He's just got it in for him, that's all. I mean, typical, isn't it? I mean, Randy's OK. I really like him. Yeah, well, you would. I mean, he's just the kind of smoothie you would like. I heard that. Well, well you should have been listening then, should you? I don't know what's wrong with this school. First I meet weirdos like Gripper. Um, well, what have I ever done to you? Oh, it doesn't mean anything, Randy. He's just jealous, that's all. Cos nobody's allowed to get on with Claire, see? Except him. You better shut your mouth, Pogo. But Claire does get on with a lot of people, even old Gripper. Shut up, Pogo. Well, what were you doing in the book cupboard with him then? He was trying to give me a kiss if you must know, Pogo Patterson, and it was horrible. Not that you cared. I did. I came to your rescue, didn't I? Stupid, did you just flip it stood there? And now look at him, all cut and bleeding on account of me. All right, all right. We're quite as a go at, aren't we? And what were you doing in the book cupboard then? Don't tell me he's trying to give you a kiss, too. Precious Matthews. Yes, Bernadette Murphy. Yes, sir. Orpington. Patterson. Where is everybody? I don't know, sir. Well, they've got to hurry up. They're making me late. Nice of you to join us, Dwayne. Ah, oh, another one. What's the matter with you? I've got grievances about my options. Come on, what is it? I'll go see Mrs McCluskey. She says I've got to do it through my year head. So I'll go and see my year head. And he's too busy to see me. Suzanne, in this school, if there's anything you want to discuss or complain about, it goes in the first instance through your form tutor. That's me, right? OK, when can I see you? Well, I'm a bit tied up today. You see what I mean? It's flipping impossible. Where have you two been? Sorry, sir, I went to the toilet. Patterson? Uh, I went to toilet as well, sir. I see. What were you doing in there? Reading the complete works of Shakespeare or something? Don't talk to us about Shakespeare. That new English master, sir. Have you met him yet? Sorry I'm late, sir. Got a nosebleed. I see. Right. Is that everybody? Gripper's mm -hmm. not here. Oh, well, I can't wait any longer. Orpington. Sir. Patterson. Sir. Reese. Suzanne Ross. Yeah. Darren Saul. Sir. Claire Scott. Mm. Claire Scott. Yes, sir. Singh. Sir. Is everything all right, H4? Yes, yes sir. sir. Errol Smith. Sir. Deborah Smith. Sir. Stebson. Sir. Immaculate timing, Stebson. See me afterwards, both of you. Stuart. Yes, sir. Marion Tyler. OK, Morris. Anita Runsworth. I ain't finished yeah. with you yet. Step, sir. Get it. <gasps> you just asked me a question about math, sir. I was helping him. I'm telling you, there's definitely something going on. Mm. Definitely. Well, I'm not so sure. It didn't involve Stepson, did it? Stepson and Sink. Good Lord, I don't know the little blighters' names yet. A group of fourth-year boys, that's all I gathered. Only uh, Randy is Sing, the Sikh boy with the turban. I had the feeling this morning that he was being got No, no, this was at lunchtime, outside the boys' locker room. You're not implying this is a racist thing, are you? No, that was not what I was implying. Listen, Nick, I know that your opinion of Grange Hill isn't very high so far, but we've never had any trouble of that sort here, and what's more, we don't intend to. Well, as I say, I'm going to discuss it with Mrs McCluskey tomorrow. Well, our school fighting of any sort simply wasn't tolerated. The moment it appeared, we stamped hard. Hey, what are you doing here? I'm new. I, no, I just... but I know you. I do. I'm sure of it. Football, that's it. Do you play football? Well, I used to at my last school. That's right, and I've played against you. I never forget a face in football. And don't tell me you played for Parkside, did you? That's know? right. And, and you... you were a fullback. How could I ever forget it? You flipping me and broke my leg. Nah, I just stopped you getting the ball the whole time, that's all. And you got a bit shirty. I didn't. But you'll be playing for Granger now, won't you? And I don't mind if you're on my side, do I? 
Seen about the trials next Saturday? Yeah, but there's been a lot of stuff. Yeah, you've got to go to him. Hey, 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 Why did you keep telling us you liked it, if all this was going on? So as not to disappoint you, because of Mum. I knew you didn't like it. I hate it. Well, you are there now, so you might as well make the most of it. My advice is, give it time. These are the problems of settling in at a new place. No, it's more than just being new. This boy Gripper, he's different. He seems to have it in for me. Well, because of my turban. I see. And my colour. I don't know what to do about it. He scares me. I'll come and sort him out for you. That is no answer. Look, Randir, you are going to come across people like this all your life. Not many, but few. A few stupid people. So you might as well learn how to deal with them. How do I deal with them? With dignity. Try to understand them. Come off it, Dad. He's got to stand up for himself. It's no good being understanding with people like Gripper. You give them half a chance and they bash you up. What are you trying to suggest? That you behave as badly as them? No, you've got to rise above it. Take no notice. You're out of touch, you really are. Come on, you are upset. Things aren't that bad, apart from this one boy. The school is all right, isn't it? Oh, sure. Except no one talks to me. There's this terrible English teacher who picks on me. A boy who wants to buy my gut on keeps asking me what's underneath my turban. <laughs> oh. Well, sometimes I get really fed up with my turban. Why should I wear it just because you do? Why should I learn Punjabi and go to the good world on Sundays? I'd much rather be at home watching telly and eating beef burgers. Randhir, look, you are a Sikh. That is your identity. The turban, the Punjabi, the Indian food, that's part of your culture. Take that away, you'll be losing part of yourself. Randhir, I used to feel the same, but then I realised you can't deny what you are. You'd end up being neither one thing nor the other. Well, that's what I am anyway. Neither one thing nor the other. I don't belong anywhere. We all belong together. That is the real truth. What's this? What's the matter? Oh, it's nothing. Just Randir having a bit of trouble with some boy at school. I knew it. I knew he wasn't happy there. Didn't I tell you? Randir, who's this boy? What's he done to you? It's nothing, Mum, honestly. Everything about Grange Hill is just fine. More from Grange Hill on Friday at ten past five.